give us a vote. They'll give us nought by that way of thinking, Nelly. These folk think we stand a chance, ma'am. And who are these folk? From all over. Although it has central characters and it focuses on a working class family, the film's a wide canvas that doesn't actually, that isn't actually carried by any one individual uh, protagonist. Because it's important to see all these different factions in parallel. I'm playing Nelly, who is the mother, the matriarch of a family. One of the threads through the film, the sort of the ordinary, and not that I think anybody's ordinary, but the ordinary people through were mill workers, a family of mill workers, and how that affects us and their involvement within Peterloo. Joseph is the bugler at Waterloo, and he walks home back to Manchester, he makes his way back to Manchester, but he is a very damaged young man, the things he's seen and experienced. What we were trying to maintain with the whole of this process was the scale, to keep the epic nature of it. Mike has always said this is a film about people, so there are a lot of people in it. One vote for each and all free men! Henry Hunt became the figurehead for universal suffrage. He was a gentleman of independent means, and he was an agitator. He would turn up at various hustings and just try and stir up the crowd. Orator Hunt a Wiltshire landowner, but a radical. A man with a mission, a man with a passion, a man with a fully inflated ego, and I think probably quite hard work. I should like to invite Mr. John Knight to now speak. John Knight is a veteran radical, born into a weaving family, so very working class, but actually well educated. I cannot concur with the notion that the imprisonment of the king would advance the cause. He read the works of Tom Paine, so he was radicalised by that, and he also paid a lot of attention to what was going on in France, which politically was very threatening to the government. This is a powder keg which will ignite at the slightest spark. I believe it prudent that we write to General Bing immediately. Indeed, instruct him to increase his forces to the utmost degree. Lord Sidmouth, who after three unhappy years as Prime Minister, became the Home Secretary for ten years and a very thorough Home Secretary he was. They speak not of reform, but of destruction. The Reverend Charles Wixted Ethelston. He was a magistrate and a priest, a very powerful man in the Northwest, very wealthy, a reactionary, and the man that reads the Riot Act at Peterloo. That's the thing for which he will go down in history. God save the king! God save, God save the king! Of that bunch of magistrates, five of them are direct portraits of actual people that existed. Taken down. Hang! Over the top! These guys were hypocrites, motivated by power, paranoia, and certainly were culpable of sending in the troops. It is our Christian duty to bring the axe down on this riotous mob! Left foot forward, lads! Samuel Bamford, he's a weaver from Middleton, and he led about maybe 10,000 people into Peterloo. Then he also kind of brought Henry Hunt to people's attention in Manchester as well. We are fellow reformers, sir, from Lancashire Way. Indeed. And although they shared politics, they didn't really share anything else and they didn't get on at all. They were real clashy personalities. Would that care to join us in a pot of ale, Mr. Hunt? Alas, I must soon return to my rooms, but uh, I thank you, gentlemen. The film is a study of human folly. It's a study of some kinds of heroism and some kinds of evil. But it is, across the entire film, a look at people in a three-dimensional way so that you see their vulnerabilities and their strengths, whoever they are. It'll be a good day, Mother. Aye, it will. Night. Night, love.